All right, guys, it's time for the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. Myself and PD Williams. Uh, we're pre recording this. This is just before Bound for Glory. You've already, PD Williams, had your production meeting. The, the show has not yet started. Uh, this probably will air after the show. So keep that in mind, guys, as we go forward and talk a little bit about Bound for Glory. PD, what's up? How's she going, eh? It's weird because normally we do the intro song live as we go, so you get to hear it, and we just bypass that. I'll add it in and post a little inside baseball. Let's 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 hammer some Bound for Glory stuff home before I can tell you an embarrassing story that happened to me over the weekend. Okay, you'll get a chuckle out of this. Bound for I sure hope so. <laughs> can you use one? Yeah, I can use one. I can always use one. Bound for Glory, for me as a fan, because I wear, it's weird that I can say that I kind of wear two hats as a Impact Insider. I'm inside the inner workings at times when they're close and we drive out together. I see the inner workings. I know a lot of what's going on. I can, you know, as we said before, I keep my mouth shut. But as a fan stepping outside, looking at Bound for Glory... I'm a little bit disappointed into the lead up for your biggest pay per view of the year, Pete. Um, I mean, that's people can say what they want to say. Um, you know, the the way we usually write the shows is, you know, pretty much based on our pay per views. Like, okay, after Slim Brewery, we're like, okay, what's Bound for Glory going to look like? You know, and you kind of have a rough draft going forward of of you know, how it's going to look. And then you kind of plan all the TVs uh, and how we're going to like, you know, put everything in place uh, leading up to it. And then obviously, I mean, I don't want to get too in far into it, but obviously, uh, you know, something that some things that we planned uh, weren't able to happen, but th- that's pro wrestling. That's everywhere. It's not just, you know, impact WWE, all that kind of stuff, ring of honor. Um, so, you know, I think, I truly think we have a solid card. Uh, just got done the production meeting Sounds like it's going to be uh, like a hell of a show. I know we ha- it's sold out. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I get to actually watch it, only produce. Uh, I'm, I'm producing the, uh, wh- which match? Uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack versus uh, Seidel and Ethan Page. And I, I, I believe I'm going to help out, because I know Sanjay's a lot on his plate, with the uh, OBE versus Lucha Brothers and Brian Cage. And if history repeats itself, uh, I'll probably, because Demore has the main event, uh, I'll probably, Demore will probably ask me halfway through the show, hey, Petey, can you take over this main event? So that's, that's what my day is going to look like right now. But I, I'm not talking about the card. The card looks good. I'm just talking about the media buildup, the internet hype for Bound for Glory, uh, it, you guys, Impact is operating as a small company, and I understand that. But it really felt like the hype for the pay-per-view coming into Sunday just seemed a little bit lackluster. Like Slammiversary, the hype was phenomenal. It, it was, once again, another rebirth into the company. But it, it felt like Slammiversary was your big pay-per-view of the year, not Bound for Glory. No, I, I agree with that. Uh you know, you can always do more with uh, promoting a show and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, I mean, you don't see it all over, uh, you know, uh, the, the Internet and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think it's already starting a trend. Uh, like uh, BFG Comda, uh, that's our a big sponsor, Comda. Um, it's already trending on there right now. Um, and it's like, what, uh, many hours before the show. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, um, you know, and I'm not part of the, the media or, you know, the, 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 the PR or whatever the case may be. So um, that's not my job. And, you know, I, I feel like they did the best they could with what we have. If you look at, uh, you know, like in the buildup for Slamversary, you know, we're in Toronto. We have Curtis Granderson, who, you know, maybe not is a big star in Toronto, but he plays for the, the Blue Jays. But, you know, from Detroit, he's a big star and he's a big baseball star. So we had a we had a couple other things that we could play off of. And, you know, this time around, I don't believe we have any, you know, uh, cool. like professional, like baseball players or other athletes outside of wrestling showing up. So, um, you know, reaching out to other markets and stuff like that, uh, you kind of need that. Um, so, I mean, you do what you can do with what you have and you hope for the best show. 
I I pushed hard for you guys to bring, and it probably scheduling. I don't know what the his schedule looks like now, but I think you and I both pushed hard to have David Arquette show up. I felt like that would have given it, and you have ties with uh, uh, D'Angelo Williams, former NFL football player, Carolina, Pittsburgh. You you add those two guys, you have them sitting in, whether they get involved or not. Maybe you give it a little bit of a WrestleMania feel. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I with the David Arquette thing. If you remember, you and I were pushing to have him uh, back in uh, like what was that March or something? No, uh, it, it might have been about then. Yeah, it, it was a it was early. Man, I'm trying to think of when it was. Uh, it it might have been June. Actually. It was before Slam. We're pushing hard, yeah, to have him come in, and then uh, all of a sudden he shows up at our last, uh, you know, one night only the Border City Wrestling. Uh, you know, 25th anniversary show. And I figured, okay, good. You know, and I, TMZ picked it up. We got a lot of press off of it. Um, and I'm thinking like, okay, let's, you know, we have David Arquette, we can use him. And, uh, but you know what? I mean, Bound for Glory was pretty much, like I said before, uh, once Slamversary is done, they're already planning for Bound for Glory. And I know once Bound for Glory is done and they announce our next pay-per-view, I believe it's in January. They're going to announce that tonight. Um, you know, they're going to start planning for what what's the January, you know, card going to look like and something. You kind of build it up from there. You know, we hit all our, uh, uh, what are those called? Um, the specials, I guess you could say, um, that, that air on TV. We hit up all those specials, too, in between. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a David Arquette fan. You know, the, the press he brings. And even, like, Dennis, you saw him in the ring. He's diving off the top rope. He's not taking it easy in there. He wants to be considered a professional wrestler. And speaking of David Arquette, you guys hang out until after this with Petey and myself. We are going to air a interview that uh, me and Dave Arquette and Dave Chris did. Petey, unfortunately, you were actually busy. I believe at the time you were agenting a show for Border City Wrestling when we recorded this. But yep. you were you are not part of this interview, so this will be the first time you listen to it. Maybe you'll actually listen to an episode now. Hey, I listen to all episodes. Just the, the beginning national anthem, then I shut it off. Of course. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that that goes about the same lines as uh, James Ellsworth. I think James has only listened to one episode of his own podcast, so you, you two uh, I mean You two are hey, cut it, from it, the it, same thread. When I, when I get time, I do listen. I, I was here. I experienced it. I mean, I, I know what I was feeling. Uh, maybe I should listen to it back and say, man, what was I thinking saying that? Uh, but then that would keep me more tight-lipped, and we don't want that on the podcast. You, we just want to talk about whatever. I want to do say thank you to everybody, whether you're a dirt sheet writer or a, a website who picked up the Scott Demore interview. Last week released it, and I believe it or not, the Scott Demore episode, PD, had more downloads than uh, Ellsworth and Chris Jericho episode we did. Yeah, which is, I mean, I'm shocked, but at the same time, I'm not shocked. I, I told Demore that, you know, because he likes to hear how well he does for himself, even though he's pretty much running Impact Wrestling. Uh, I, I said, hey, just so you know, um, you know, the, the episode we did, uh, thanks to Eddie Edwards, I said, um, ha- has more downloads than our Chris Jericho episode. And uh, the more just goes, yeah, Dennis put some really good clickbait on there. So I, I said, Dennis is really good. He's been doing it for a long time. But it wasn't clickbait because, um, you know, he, he talked about the meeting with WWE and uh, you put that on there. And he did actually talk about the meeting with WWE. Um, so I, I don't believe it was clickbait, but it was, you know, it was enough to go away. You know, p- people are wondering about the meeting between Impact and WWE, and what better person to hear it from than the guy that was actually in the meeting? There were more questions I felt like we could have asked, but it wasn't the right time or pro- place. That's like maybe a second or third interview a year from now going, all right, look, we're a year past. Can you really open up? And, and, and maybe then there'll be more of an opening, and op- opening up to what – yeah, not that it didn't really happen, but what the like the atmosphere and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's the thing when you're working on not deals, but just when you're working in a relationship with another company that's uh, relatively like new, you can't really d- 
disclose all the, you know, ins and outs of it because you're still working on it and you don't, you know, it's a confidentiality thing. But you'll see, like, uh, other podcasts and stuff, like, back when uh, WCW was around, when they went under. Now you have people talking about, like, yeah, you know, we couldn't talk about it then, but now it's, like, you know, whatever, 15 years later or whatever it is. Um, this is what really happened and this is what really happened. So the truth always comes out in the end. It just doesn't come out uh, right at the beginning. All right, let's move on to the Abyss Hall of Fame thing. Um, there was a lot that happened. And I'm not really going to talk about the Austin Aries Johnny Impact thing that happened. It was, it was, uh, it caught everybody by surprise. I was caught. I watched it. Uh, it is what it is. But I want to ask you about the venue because it felt like you guys did it in the back of a Chili's or Applebee's or something like that. Really? People- um. Well, it was, it, it was like kind of like a, a bar setup. Um, it was at this place called McHale's. Um, I don't, it, right in Manhattan, New York. Um, and yeah, we had a, a portion sectioned off and, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, there was fans there. You couldn't see them on camera. I don't, I, I was there. I didn't like watch it. So I was there and Like, it was kind of small. You had uh, very minimal seating, and then all the fans were just kind of piled in, like, behind trying to catch peaks of what was going on and stuff. But um, I enjoyed it. I mean, regardless of where it was, it could have been at the lobby of the hotel, for all I care. I was really uh, into it. All the things that, like, Damore was saying, Don, uh, even when uh, Father uh, Jim Mitchell came up and was talking and stuff, like, He's such a great talker, and he could just tell the story of Abyss um, just so well, like more than anybody else, I believe, can. And then Abyss's uh, uh, speech was emotional. And even, God, they did this, uh, and I don't know how it came across on Twitch, but they did this video package of kind of his career. And, man, it was so good. Like, And, and Abyss was in tears, man. Like, it, it was a good night, and... Um, you know, you just feel for the guy. You know, this is like the, the the biggest thing that's ever happened to him, and I was just so glad to be a part of it. What do you get when you are an Impact Hall of Famer? Um, he got this. Uh, um, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it wasn't a plaque because it was the it was glass, like you could kind of see right through it, um, and it said, you know, uh, Impact Hall of Fame 2018 class abyss. Um, you know, so I guess it's a war, but it's the honor, too. Like, he was the first one the original. of the, like, a, a original to be put in the Hall of Fame. Like, you got guys in our Hall of Fame that are, like, the Dudley Boys and Sting and uh, I'm trying to think of everybody that's in there. Uh, Kurt Angle, uh, Earl Hebner, Gail Kim, all of those people are either in the Hall of Fame at WWE or future Hall of Famers of WWE. Um, and Abyss, you know... Uh, the first original so it just it kind of opened up the door saying like hey you know you don't have to be in the wwe just to be in our hall of fame like he made a name for himself and that's what he said in his speech like in a world of like stings and 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 kurt angles and stuff like that they're like okay we're gonna take a chance on this guy and we're gonna get him in the hall of fame that's 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 kind of nice, I, and I, I like to see that. Is there, I, I don't want to say like a traveling board or something, but there's got to be something that you guys can put up, right? For what? What's that? The, the Hall of Fame. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. It's kind of, I think it started, and now we're just kind of continuing it. Like, it was started under the Dixie Carter regime. And it's just like, hey, you know, we got to continue this thing. We can't just let our Hall of Fame, like, be. But I think right now we have, like, less than 10 people in our Hall of Fame. I think in the future, you know, years from now, like, both when you and I are, like, grandparents, I believe it's going to be bigger and there's going to be something more to show for it. Let's move. Oh, by the way, for one last thing about Bound for Glory, for a company that's trying to distance itself away from its roots as much as this regime and impact is doing has there been any talk about making bound for glory no longer your premier event um 
I don't believe so. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we used to do 12 pay-per-views a year, so obviously a lot of those were dropped. We pretty much just have, uh, Dennis, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bound for Glory and Slammiversary are like the two that still have the same name as from, you know, when, uh, you know, like from when we first started. Um, and the Redemption, that one was brand new, and our upcoming one in January, that's going to be a brand new name. Uh, so we're, we're trying to make new names and stuff. Yeah, to, you know, to distance ourselves, but still, we know where we came from. We, we know the history of Impact, the guys that used to wrestle here and work here and all that stuff. So it, it's good to show, like, hey, you know, here's a package of the last, whatever, 15 slammiversaries or 10 Bound for Glories. And that way you can actually see, hey, we do have a history. And kind of like, you know, it's like our Super Bowl or our WrestleMania or whatever. Like, we do have a history of it, and these are the things that happened in the past. Uh, you know, even though we're trying to distance ourselves, we still do have a past, but not all of our past was bad. We've had some great wrestlers here. We've had some great uh, matches. Um, so, I mean, those are the things that we want to remember. Let's move on to a couple entertaining stories before we get to this week's interviews. Uh, Pete, we were at the Windsor tapings. Uh, it was you and Tommy Dreamer sitting at a table. And w- inside baseball, I've been pushing you to get Tommy Dreamer on the podcast now for a while. And by the way, people listening and hear the background noise, you're out on a balcony in, outside New York City. So it's going to be a little noisy. It's, it's, it's okay, guys. Uh, yeah, the uh, the AC or whatever the heat just kicked on, so I'm trying to get away from that. Uh, run, PD, run. Anyways, yeah, you, me, Tommy Dreamer are sitting there, and Tommy's you know hobnobbing, talking to people, having having a Tommy Dreamer good time. And I lean over, and I'm not sure how I set this up, but I think I said something along the lines of, "Hey, PD, now that you're sitting next to Tommy, will you see if he answers one of your texts to be on the show?" And I, I did that to be a little bit funny, to get the ball rolling, but who knew the series of events that that would set off between you and Tommy Dreamers? Yeah, and I said and I said right in front of him, as if he wasn't sitting right there, I said, yeah, he didn't return my text, and then that's when he jumped in oh. and said, what are you talking about? Uh, I, you didn't text me or whatever, and I showed him the text. Dennis, you were right there. I said, I- hey. Look, it, it was sent on this date right here. You did not respond to me. I would never do that to you. That's what he's saying and stuff. Uh, what happened after that, Dennis? Well, he looks through his phone. Does, does I don't think he even had the text in his phone. I don't remember clearly. Then a little bit later, uh, he, he goes and, uh, ah, boy, I'm trying to remember the series of events. He comes up and goes, is that PD's number? I go, yeah. He goes, huh. Look, no text. And I didn't see what he was pointing to. Then the next day at border, at the uh, Border City Wrestling event in Diamondback Saloon, the uh, I believe it was the Twitch only show. Yep. He comes up to me and says, hey, put your phone number in my phone. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting my phone number in his phone. I'm making sure I put his number in my phone because we were talking baseball. I wasn't thinking anything of it really. And he's like, you know, Petey's not even in my phone. He said something along those lines. I go, oh, okay, because, you know, he wants me to make sure it gets back to you. So I go up to you and I say, hey, Petey, guess what? Tommy Dreamer gave me his number and uh, he doesn't have yours and uh, he doesn't want yours. And you are a little bit hurt now. So, Okay. I don't know how that's possible. So first off, after all of this, he goes, I said, how do you not have my number? I'm like, look at these texts. We've been texting each other like when I was working on your shows, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, look at, yep, so-and-so is coming to get you now. The, and then you're sending me like when you tweet something, you're like, hey, look at the stuff I ate today. Like you're texting this to me. How do you not have my number? Are you just texting like a random number? Like I don't I wonder who this is. So um, we, we, we argued about that for a bit. And then – he said, well, I got a new phone. He, he pulled one of those things on me. Uh. I'm like, I got a new phone. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, well, do you want my number? And he says, no, I don't want your number. So he's a little hurt probably because you have me and you calling him out on like, hey, you didn't respond to the text because I know, I know he got that text 
because that same day he's like, Hey, can you take a picture of this? Me, I don't take a picture of this for me. I don't have my phone on me. Uh, and I did, and I sent it to him and I know he got that. So, I mean, it's, I think he was called out and was like, ah, I don't have time to do the podcast that day. Cause I gave him like a particular day and time and he probably didn't want to say no. Um, but whatever he's here now I see him. Hmm. I mean, (laughs) it is what it is. Do you think this is going to help matters worse when we tag him in this? Um, Oh yeah. I I hope it makes it worse because then he'll be like, fine. All right. Not only will I do your podcast, I'll show up every single week and be a co-host just because that's how Tommy is. Let me tell you, by the way, speaking of Twitter, I don't know how or why, but it seems like I'm being blocked left and right by people. And you see what I tweet. I don't at people. I'm not vicious. I don't I don't take jabs at many people, right? Yep. So uh, someone said, hey, because we were looking for someone to transcribe our interviews. Hey, go talk to this guy. So I go over there. I'm blocked. Then someone said, why don't you go talk to this other guy? So I go to follow this other guy. I'm blocked. Uh, Chelsea Green had blocked me. Josh Matthews had blocked me. Uh, I got two of those reversed. Then James Ellsworth is in town. And we're sitting next to Simon Gotch or Simon Grimm, depending on how you know him. And we're sitting there and we're talking. And, and this is the second time I've I've talked to him. He, he was at the Buffalo Indie Show that you, me, and uh, uh, Jimmy Jacobs drove to. Jimmy Jacobs, yeah. yes. And he, he was nice enough. I didn't talk to him then. No interactions. I've, I've never added him on Twitter. I've never said anything mean or malicious about him because, you know, I'm going to these shows. I don't want to say anything about people that will show up. So I'm like, man, I had a blast. You're a great guy. I go and he's like, hey, great meeting you. I had fun. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to follow him. I go to follow him and I'm blocked by him. Now, I, I do not believe the block happened that day or night. There's there's nothing to indicate that happened. But at some point over time, he's blocked me. And I'm not sure why I'm being blocked, Pete. Yeah, like you and I, that's a head scratcher for us. No, it, it, it really is. Especially as soon as you follow him, you're blocked. And it's like, so before you could see all this stuff, as soon as you follow him, you're blocked. I mean, I don't, uh, maybe there's there's got to be a glitch in Twitter or something. Um, just, I guess, suffered the fatality of it, I guess. I don't know. But didn't you say there's some sort of like, uh, media group or something that's like, you're on a list and you get blocked or something. Is that what you were saying? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what's going on. I've said two, two things against somebody in my time as, as a inside wrestler, wrestler guy. It was one was against PW insiders. When they did a story just bashing Brian Christopher the day he died. And I I was very vocal about how crappy that was. And, yep. and, and, and I know I was blocked by those guys. Now, maybe the people who blocked me were supporters of them. And, and that's fine then. Because I would not want anybody to follow me who supported that kind of crap, honestly. And... It, it, that, yeah, that, that's, that's that's justified, yeah. That disgusts me. If that's why you blocked me, great. I am more than happy to be blocked if you were mad at me for going after somebody who talked ill, whether he deserved it or not, the day he died. that that That's a punk wrestling move, and especially doing it behind a paywall where your subscribers are paying for that crap, it, it makes me sick. Yeah, I, I, t- I totally agree with you, Dennis. I mean, um, but I mean that's because they're like oh we don't want that bad press we're gonna block him whatever that's one guy I, whatever the case may be um but it still doesn't justify all the other blocks like i i it's a it's still a head scratcher for me i don't think we'll ever be able to get to the bottom of it um and i don't know what to do to make it right i really don't i mean i guess say hey if you're blocking dennis please stop <laughs> or un- unblock him like please stop blocking him unblock him uh Anyways, and now on and, to... And I, I've told you too, Dennis. I'm like, you know, I've, I don't think I've ever, ever, ever blocked anybody on Twitter. I'm like, I've, I've had people like say mean things and bash me and whatever. But I'm like, hey, I, I'm not going to block you. If that's how you feel, I'm just going to ignore it. I mean, 
I, I don't know. I don't understand this block thing, I guess. Um, cause if you don't like entertain the idea, then they're just going to stop. They're not going to keep tweeting you. They're like, Oh, he's not even paying attention. He's not even giving me the time of day that speaks more volumes than a block. I'm like, wow, he won't even respond to me, even though I'm not blocked by him. Wow. I know he sees it, but he's not even taking the time of day. That means more when you block somebody that means like you're getting to them somehow, some way, and you have to press block because you can't stand that person. You're letting them control your emotions. Totally different story. So this blocking thing, I think it's ridiculous. I, I'm st- It's still a head-scratcher for me, but look, that's fine, depending on why you block me. If, if you're mad, I said some something snarky about Lido Rush, great. I'm okay with that then, because w- whatever. <laughs> so let me move on to what could have been the most embarrassing moment of my life that happened Saturday night at this indie show. James Ellsworth, okay. James Ellsworth comes into town. I pick him up. We're driving around. Take him to the indie show. I'm hanging out with him at his merch table. Uh, apparently, I was put to work by him, too, also, which was uh, a blast. Sarcasm. Uh, out and about with him all day, there was a handful of people that had went up to him and asked him for his picture. And, look, James, it, James loves James. I'm I'm very open about my relationship with James. We're not very friend. We're not really friends. We're almost business partners, unlike you and I. So, you know, driving around, you know, I go, you know what? I I want James to see that somebody knows who I am, right? So there is a lady I know that was going to this same independent show, XICW show. I I I DM her on Twitter and say, listen, I'll buy you a beer or two if you come up to the pot the table you you say hey love the podcast guys then you say dennis you're my favorite podcaster and that you know you're cute something along those lines right yeah uh she goes i'm a little nervous but okay so i'm sitting there she comes up to the table and goes hey guys i love the podcast wow dennis you look a lot different than i thought you would and you're also better looking than what your picture is and walks away. Oh, that's a good compliment. I, th- I feel I'm, I'm left going and, and James kind of goes, it, it, he goes, Oh look, she's kind of hitting on you. She walks away and goes, did she insult you? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I, you know, now I have to play it off. Now I'm like, now I'm like, you know, the ego boost gone wrong where I'm like, Oh, man. So I go over. I buy her the beer anyways, right? And I go, yep. what What was that? That was the worst pickup lines <laughs> ever. And she's like, I'm sorry. I got nervous. I had to get out of there. I'm like, you look better than your picture. I'm like, did my picture look horrible on Twitter? It, it was... It was one of those things where I'm just like, it was, <laughs> I, I was like, that had to have been the, I hope you don't, I hope you don't pick up guys like that. Cause that was horrible. That's, uh, that, that's not too embarrassing. Like the way I look at it is when somebody says, Hey, you look a lot better than in your picture. Usually it's the other way around. Right? Like I know, uh, like females, they'll like take all these pictures. Ah, that one doesn't work. Hold on. Let me switch the camera angle. No. Okay. Delete. Okay. Oh yeah. That, that's the perfect one to post. And they post it, right? Mm-hmm. And with this one, I mean, it, that, that's great. That's a, that's, that's a great compliment. I mean, I mean, it's kind of a backhanded one, but it's a compliment <laughs> nonetheless. I, I told her I would talk about this on the podcast, by the way, because I was like, this oh, was... she's going to love it. Yeah, this was too good not to talk about. That, this was one of those, I'm going to get you James Ellsworth. Me. <laughs> and then it's like... And it blew up in your face, it yeah. It did. Yeah. I'm like... Thanks for downloading the podcast. Uh, yeah, just just once, just once. Listen, I'm going to put this out there to people. If I'm sit and, and you're here, so pretend you don't listen, okay? If if yeah. I'm at an indie show with or a regular show with Petey Williams or even James Ellsworth, come up to me and at least act like you like me. You know, <laughs> per, pretend you don't even have to really like me. You could come up in in. It, you, what did what do you and I say, Petey? Uh, hey, if you come up and mention the podcast, you'll give away a free autograph. Now, yeah, absolutely. James won't do that, by the way. 
James is uh James, you know, pays his rent this way. So he's he's uh very off the off the podcast story later. Anyways, I was just I was just a little bit like, "Oh, you you've got to be kidding me." I could not believe it. I mean, I'm getting blocked left and right. I'm sitting next to Simon Grimm, who's probably blocking me at that minute. Like, screw this guy. And then that happened. Hey, Dennis, you know what? Yeah, I, you're my friend. You don't, I, you don't have to validate anything towards me. If people want to block you, block you. But I'll never block you. And I hope people that listen to this won't ever block you as well. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I, I, I yeah, could no use that. I, I, I could use the... Uh, so, anyways... I, you need a little pick me up. So I, I did, I did. It was, it was bad. You know, it's almost like being like the little midget guy from Fantasy Island tattoo. Do, do you remember? Well, you can't say that word anymore. You have to say little person. Uh, okay, the the little person uh, from Fantasy. I, I don't know who you're talking about though. But uh, go on. Really, you don't remember the plane? The plane? No. What is this from? Fantasy Island, the eighties team. No. Seri- I've never watched that show. Seriously? I grew up in Canada with, like, no no television channels. All right? Remember that. You've never... And you... I, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. That is... I'm going to block you then. You might as well. <laughs> I would not be shocked. I, and by the way, if you're going to block me, at least tell me so I don't have to wonder. Like, hey, uh, you're a D-bag blocked. Or... Or, you know, I like PD but hate you, block. Or, I'm blocking you because I thought it'd be funny, blocked. <laughs> you know what you just opened up, right? If, no, everybody's going to do it just to be funny. I'm, I'm you're, Like, your, your social media is going to be like, I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't, every, I'm blocked by everybody. That would, uh, that would be incredibly sad and funny. Anyways, what else, what's up with you? Nothing. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm just waiting. I know uh, I'm trying to get this done before, uh, you know, everything starts picking up. I know they're setting up the ring and all that kind of stuff right now. Um, show starts at 8 o'clock. Um, doors probably open closer to 7. Um, I know they have a big, like, concrete, uh, I don't even know what they call it, a concrete jungle death match, I think it's called. Um, so we're going over production notes for that because you have to remember, we have to like set up the ring to make it like concrete and which I'm, uh, kind of excited to see. And, you know, so we have to like position stuff in the show so that we're doing other stuff that the audience is watching while that's getting all set up and stuff. Um, so a lot of stuff to do, um, coming up here. So I'm just, uh, you know, trying to enjoy the last little bit of freedom I get before uh, everything starts, uh, you know, becoming chaotic, I guess you could say. Finally, before we throw in an interview and call it a day on our end, you and I, I do want to talk to you about the Border City show. And it was yeah. a un- unfortunate circumstance where you were agenting the women's match. Giselle Shaw yep. versus uh, Scarlet, the smoke show. Yep. Yep. Uh, there were, it seemed to be, from what I saw, a double injury where I think Scarlet hurt her ribs. And Giselle was knocked out cold. It was nasty. Uh, you know, by the way, first of all, Giselle Shaw, my favorite wrestler now. She is, to me, almost a total package. She's hot. She's nice. She's hot. She can wrestle. <laughs> she's hot. She's she's nice. She's hot. I, listen, all right. All right. I get it. I get it. Wh- yeah, it was... Uh... Use her, was, use yeah, her so, more, by the way. You Look, you better go back to Impact, and, and she's not paying me. And if she is, my PayPal email address is uh, Dennis77Farrell at gmail.com. Anyways, use her more. Holy cow. But let's go back to uh, the injury. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they were up in the match. I had to, It was supposed to be a three-way match to start off. Uh, Scarlett, Giselle, and Kira Hogan. Uh, the night before at the Border City Wrestling Show, the 25th anniversary, Kira uh, possibly suffered a concussion. Um, so, you know, for, you know, cautious measures, we're like, okay, we're going to pull you from this three-way match. Uh, you can take a break today. You know, we don't want to get you any further injured or anything like that. She was and at the show. And it was going to be a singles match. 
She was not in the match, yeah. No, but she was at the show so, still. She was at the show expecting to work, and we just made the call, and I believe it was the right call that, uh, you know, you're going to sit out this one. There's no need to hurting, like, hurting yourself more. I know you say, and that's the thing. She wasn't like, I need to sit out. It was like, yeah, I'm good to go. Of course she is, because that's the way she is. But, you know, we just had to make the decision. Like, no, let's, 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 no. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it was relatively quick in the match, you know, like it was a, a dive spot to the outside and they ran it by me and they said they they came up with it. Um, they both said they felt comfortable with it. I said, OK, and I'm not the one. You'll never see me as an agent go. Um, I'm never going to make you do anything that you don't feel comfortable doing. But if, if you and your opponent feel comfortable doing something. I might go, uh, I don't know. But if you're like, yeah, yeah, we can, uh, we'll do it. I'll say, I'll kind of weigh the, the risk versus reward. And with that, I'm, I'm thinking it's a dive. Uh, Giselle's a, a good base. I asked her, I'm like, are you a good base? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, things should go okay. The potential for, you know, injury is kind of minimum. Um, so I said, yeah, absolutely do that. Because I'm, I'm going to let people, I'm not going to hold people down or anything like that. I'm going to let them, male or female, Go out and give it their best shot, um, and they did it. And like it was, it was like huh, not not bad. It was just a crossbody off the top to the floor. But when she caught her, smacked her head. Uh, she, yeah, it wasn't like usually when I catch people, I won't catch it as if I'm catching in the ring. Like I'll, I'll bump to my back. I won't do that. I'll like catch them and kind of fall down like to my knee and side kind of deal because I know there's a huge amount of velocity it's higher because you're, you're you're higher up coming down on you and there's no padding on the outside so um but it looked great i mean i'll tell you what it looked great the crowd went like went nuts um and she finished the match too they both finished the match yes. they were both injured um i made the call i said hey you know you're gonna have to go to the hospital and i mean and the reports came back that she didn't have a concussion that, that's that's the last i heard of it well, um, cause I had him keep updating me. So, well, let, let's, you skip over some stuff here because you came back to do a podcast and you didn't know right away she was hurt because you were off doing another match, setting that up. And I kind of said, Hey, yep. you may want to check, you go check things. You know, you took control of the situation, you know, you, you made sure everything was right. But now the reason why I bring this up is as an agent, how afterwards, after somebody gets hurt, whether it's a freak snap, you know, someone breaks an arm or pulls a muscle, whether it's a freak injury like what happened or it was something where maybe you should have caught it, not saying this was that, what kind of responsibility and how do you feel as an agent after you hear something like this? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have let them do that. Um, that's, that's immediately what I think. It's always horrible. When somebody gets hurt, I hate getting hurt. I even hate worse when my opponent gets hurt in the ring. Um, but then again, you know, sometimes I, I think it is professional wrestling. You know, we know we've all been hurt. If you haven't, then there's something wrong with you. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but we've all had injuries before. We we put like our, our life, our bodies at like risk just to entertain the fans. And I think these ladies knew um, that that that's what they were doing and it was like a it wasn't like a wrestling 101 spot it was like it was a dive but it was like it wasn't a flip or anything it was a dive off the top um which is you see all the time in wrestling and i give it to those to those ladies that wanted to go out there and do it um and you know if for responsibility wise yeah i feel i feel horrible for it because then i think as an agent i'm like well and I, and I battle with this, but I always come back to the last thing I just said about like, you know, we're professionals and we're doing this to entertain the fans. And I, I weigh the risk versus reward. And when I weighed that out with that, I'm like, the, the risk is limited. Um, but there's always risk in wrestling. I've seen guy do uh, uh, oh, beginning of their match go up on the top rope to like say yay to the crowd or a second rope, I should say. And when they jump down, they tear their ACL wasn't even part of the match and it happens so yeah and that's why i said you know what i know she didn't want to go to the hospital and I, I i made her go i said no you you need to go get checked out and then i obviously i don't use a scare tactic but um you know i, I don't want to see anything happen to her i said i don't want there to be bleeding in the brain 
And then it, it's not just an injury, it's death. You know, I said, you need to get checked out. So, and it's not a scare tactic. It's, it's legit. It's happened before. Like going back to uh, uh, Chris Candido when he worked for Impact, he broke his leg in a match. And then uh, after that, it was all like fine and stuff like that. But he, he died of a, a blood clot in the leg. Like, it, like, that's just freak accidents happen all the time. So I just want to err on the side of caution all the time. Here's how I knew she was concussed or she had something wrong with the head. Was she came up and she's like, hey, you're really cute. And I'm like, yo, you're messed up, girl. <laughs> that didn't happen, but uh, okay. I did, no, it didn't. All joking aside, that yeah. jokes. But no, I'm, I'm glad she's all right. She's, you know, a very nice lady who I am quickly becoming a fan of. I mean, if you watch her work, I feel like she she's only been in the industry four years. Uh, I don't know how well known she is. You know, I'm I'm slowly getting plugged into the indie scene, but holy cow, I really feel like she is somebody that needs to be part of an Impact roster. Yeah, and it's it's you know she's Canadian, obviously, so there's work visa issues and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I obviously she wouldn't be on any in, or she's on some Impact shows that she can work. So. You know, if we didn't, we weren't interested in her, we would have her on no impact show. So obviously, definitely, she's on our radar. Um, I know she does a lot of, you know, indie shows and stuff like that. And that, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think she would add to our women's roster 100%. I agree, Dennis. All right. There we go, Pete. Enjoy Bound for Glory. Can we record maybe this week for After Bound for Glory and just talk about wrap ups and some of the surprises that may or may not happen? Yeah, I'm going to look at my schedule uh, tomorrow once we, uh, you know, get it all laid out and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I shouldn't be wrestling on any of these uh, upcoming tapings. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this always happens. And I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't like to anticipate this. But whenever there's an injury, it's like, hey, uh, put PD in. So, uh, and I, I'll tell you what, my name was already mentioned for Bound for Glory with a, a certain cancellation. But, um we won't get into that, uh, but my name was already crossed, so I, it, it, I could still be wrestling and stuff like that. But right now, uh, we'll look at the format for tomorrow, and hopefully, we get some uh, post bound for glory. We can talk about that because it's going to be a really exciting night. All right, stay tuned. Dave, Chris from OVE, myself, sit down and interview David Arquette. Fun podcast. Pete, stick around for a minute. We got to talk. All right. Okay. Oh, oh, Petey, before we send everybody to the Jake Chris, J- Dave Chris interview with uh, David Arquette and myself, I want to pitch this number out one more time. It's 231-930-2053. You can call it, leave a question for Petey or myself, a comment if there's something you want us to talk about, something you heard. I, I just have a thought about the wrestling industry in general, and you want us to you know, talk about off what you talked about. Call that number. It's a 24-7 hotline. It, it gets to this podcast. It also gets to the Dugcast with James Ellsworth. So feel free. Just let us know, hey, this is Mike from Blank calling for the Dugcast. I have this question. So, Pete, that's really it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, hit us up. We'll, we'll field all the questions and try to get to all of them if time permits. Uh, um, by the way, Blue Chew, go to bluechew.com. Use the promo code Ellsworth. This is a quick one. Uh, you get uh, free shipping on your Blue Chew. No, shipping's five bucks. You get the free order of Blue Chew. Free, Use yeah. the promo code Ellsworth. It helps keep our lights on. Uh, we appreciate them coming back. They don't keep coming back if you don't order. So get your free first shipment of, of Blue Chew. Just pay $5 shipping handling. Use the promo code Ellsworth one more time. We, PD and myself, we appreciate it, Pete. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. All right. We're back here on the Wrestling Perspective Podcast. Myself and P. No, PD Williams. I'm not PD Williams. I'm Dave Christ. Dave Christ. From the OBE. So I, I, I'll say this. You and David Arquette. Which I wish he was here. He's today. already a better wrestler. Yes. Well, stop it. Oh, he is here. Hey, hey, he is a better wrestler. Hey, hey. You All two right. are Never. the first and only repeat guests that we've had, and now it's at the same time wow. without PD Williams. There that. you go. Look at that. So I feel special. So I'll start this off, Dave. 
I'm going to tell you, uh, A, you know I'm a big fan of yours. Thank I you. tell you every day, you're ready to block me on on Twitter. <laughs> and, and well, I can't even get him to follow me back. Oh, i got to follow you back right now. We can, we can make that happen. I uh, know David I, I'm Arquette. Not, I'm not begging for followers. No. Nah. Just one. I am. I just want one. <laughs> okay, can, I, can I go ahead and just say this, though? Yeah. Okay, so last night I was flying back from Los Angeles. Okay. I uh, spent two days in Los Angeles. With and David Arquette? Uh, no, I, I mean I tried to hang out with him, but I could not slide in the DM. Next time you're out there, I'm down. I'm down. But um, I watched one of my favorite movies uh, of all time, mm-hmm. like probably one of my favorite slasher films. Okay, that you just happen to be. In. <laughs> yeah, but... it's, it's one of my favorites, uh-huh. and it, it got me through this horrible experience on United Airlines. Oh, no, it was the, the worst. worst. Uh, the worst. Murder bed. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> so I screamed a little bit. Oh, <laughs> there we are. So, well, like, can, can I tell you about this real quick? Sure. I'm not trying to hard. No. I'll tell you about this real quick. So I bought the internet, right? But yeah. The whole so, internet? So I, I All of the, it? I bought the Wi-Fi. Right. Okay. And then they're like, oh, yeah, there are, there's limitations on what you can use. And I'm like, oh. okay, so what can I use? They're like, oh, you can use our entertainment. Hmm. It's like, then what's the point of buying the Wi-Fi? Yeah, no kidding. I can't surf the internet. I can't watch videos. I can't. I can't watch memes. And they had absolutely nothing that I was interested in watching because, like, I usually watch nothing but horror movies. Okay, nice. that's, that's all I do. I love it. And then I, I, I happened to stumble across Scream, and I was like, Good <sighs> <sighs> yeah. and you knew you were gonna see them. I know. Good well, movie I, you like is always good to rewatch when you don't got nothing. I love it. So let, let's talk about tonight. Yeah, and man. this is the first time I really got to see you up close. And uh, wow. once again, I'm still learning, man. It's it's been it's been it's been great. I mean, there's no way to get experience. I mean, you could train, but there's no way to get in ring experience except getting out there. But uh, here's my compliment to you. I've never seen anybody with this joy in their face like you have. You're out there and you're smiling. You have a sparkle in your eye. We had to tear you away from the the backstage TV yeah. because you're <laughs> clapping and you're loving it. And oh man, I just watched the Tommy Dreamer. I know. Dilo proud. So I mean, I was in heaven. That's it, the, like, I'm gonna awesome. go ahead and throw this out there too. If you're ever in Ohio, yes. Sammy Callahan and I have a school in oh, Dayton. Oh man, so I you're would more love than welcome. To come by. And, and we we do a a every Wednesday show yeah, and we do a first Friday of the month show. Wow, so man. I might be doing Ohio. a film in, in uh, Ohio. Well, just let me know. I'll I be would. more than happy to, to give you some ring That'd time. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. So, I mean, you got to tag with me, though. <laughs> yeah. You got to be a part of OVE for a night. Oh, yes, oh, man. It'll be good. Would. Oh, it'd be great. Absolutely. Speak out. <laughs> so, let, let, let's, let me ask you this question now. You, since the first time we've interviewed you to now, You've had many matches under your belt. Is is it what you're hoping for? Ah, oh, I'm thrilled just to like be included in the locker room. And a show like this, 25th anniversary, Border City Wrestling. Yeah, it's been amazing to to hear Tommy Dreamer tell stories in the locker room. That's like you know, I know, it's really, is a fan's dream. So, yeah, it's been a lot. It's been fun. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's uh, it's really paying off. And just learning each time I go out. You know, there's a lot of stuff if you don't have the time in the ring that you have to learn about slowing down, not rushing things and pitter pattering your feet and you know, just being present. Dave, he has a ring in his backyard. I love it. Was uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver uh, your first little thing? Uh, I did uh, a um, weekend. The 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 one, Oh yeah, when I went up and did just with, sort of uh, with Fitch and Vega. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that that's that's me and Sammy show. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh cool, man. Yeah, I'd love to do something there. Uh, that was just sort of uh, that was me coming back from people just being mean to me on the internet and just kind of saying, okay, you know, here I am. So yeah, I'm supposed to figure something out with Matt at some point. That'd be dope. What, what are your goals now? Have they adjusted now that you've got ring experience, you're going to shows? Are you starting to really figure out the indie circuit, what you like, what you don't like? Has, have your goals adjusted from where you kind of started out? Because when you started out, you, you told us, look, my only goal is to sour the taste of wrestling fans from the WCW championship. Yeah. You Clearly, you've done that. Everybody has embraced you. And... Uh, I mean, I have to a certain extent. I mean, there's still like, a lot of people out there that 
you'll see a match like tonight be like, ah, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, you know, but uh, one of the big things is respect. And, you know, there's, you're always going to have people hating. So you can't win all of them. But, uh, you know, it's always it, – what I've really learned is that it's about entertaining the crowd. And, like, if they have a good time, then you win. You know, just everyone wins. Every I want everybody's match to be good. I want – you know, I want the crowd to be hot for everybody. I want everything to be elevated and, and just fun, you know? I'm just, it's, it's all about, it's just like what you said about Scream. It's about taking you out of a moment and just putting you in something, not thinking about your problems for a second. Suspending to be your able disbelief. to scream, yeah, and just be crazy and laugh at people and just have a good time. That's really it. No, if, if I may yeah. throw this in there, I've yeah. been doing this for 20 yeah. years now, Please. and and watching you in the ring like tonight, watching you do the stuff, and just watching how much fun you're having, and, and watching how, I mean, obviously you have natural charisma about you, you, you definitely do, and the way that you connect with the crowd, the way the crowd was up for you, like, it was something special to watch, and that's not just me saying something, because I've always been a big fan of yours, uh, I, I'm going to come at you as a wrestling critic because you're yes. a wrestler in my eyes. You are a wrestler in my eyes. Yeah. And you Thank you me. have uh, the intangible. You have that it factor of being able to connect with the crowd and, and getting them to feed off the energy that you have, feeding off the love. And you're always going to have haters on the internet. Yeah. Like I said, I've been it doing is. this for 20 years before the internet. Mm-hmm. So you just want to hate them enough that they'll scream at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> but see, but... <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot of people that hated you before they saw you tonight, and then after seeing your performance tonight, they can't hate you. Yeah. And that's the thing that I find so much joy in wrestling, is it doesn't matter how much someone hates you, as soon as they see you give a good performance, and they see that you're having fun, and they see you're doing what you love, because I'm sure that a lot of people thought, oh, it's David Arquette, it's probably just some some freaking gimmick. And then seeing your joy, seeing how much fun you're having, seeing how you're interacting with the people. And, and it's not like you're doing, if, can I say shit? Yeah, you can say it's shit. It's like you're doing shitty moves. Your moves are, are crisp and clean. They're definitely better than the first time I saw you. Right and you can tell you're putting in the work. And you can tell you're, you're dedicating yourself to trying to be better. And I commend you for that, man. Thanks, like, that man. is so awesome. Really and at any time anyone shits on you, I'll fight him for you. <laughs> I, I got I you. like it. I got you. I'll fist fight him. Yeah. Have you found the wrestlers have been very open when you go backstage now for shows? I'm still learning stuff each time, but yeah, it's been really cool. I mean, the first time, uh, you know, I finished my match with RJ, and, you know, the people in the locker room were really cool and really accepting. Actually, it was right before that I had a match in, in Tijuana. Uh, did you drink the water? Eight, 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 no, I never drink the water. Good. But an eight-man uh, match, and the luchadors that taught me there were the first real ones that said, you know. I, Welcome like, to the family. Doing it, gave me their uh, mask at the end. Oh, really, wow. Yeah, it was a real honor. You, let, let me say this. I'm down there with him. He's stretching. He's doing the cords, right, before yep. the match. And I really want to lean over to him. And I know you're getting ready for the match. I go, I wanted to lean over and go, I do the same thing before every podcast, so don't worry. I just saw you doing it. I just saw you doing it. Like, your guns are huge right now. How are they fitting in that shirt? Well, it shrinks with the heat up here in this room. I can see that. But, Dave, this is, like I said, I had to get Dave to do this interview with because Dave's a big fan. I'm a big fan. Absolutely. And someone like you, I think, really needs to hear that and hear it more that – because when we say it, I can tell there's like you, you're a little nervous about it and sometimes apprehensive of taking the compliments because you're so new. But you know, a lot of I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but a lot of even performing for me is overcoming, you know, the little kid that's put in front of the grass that's supposed to read. You know what I mean? And so it's like, and that's a lot of what I'm trying to get through in the ring. Like, don't doubt yourself so much. You need confidence. You need to. You know, slow it down. You need to be deliberate about stuff. You do, I, I get in my head, I get all, ugh. Anytime I do a live talk show, I'm always like, ugh. People are like, oh, he's on drugs or something. And I'm not. I'm just, I just get nervous. I get mm-hmm. the energy from people, and it just makes me this little. So just learning and, and just repetition and working with people like RJ, Halal Beefcake, they were incredible today. And, and uh so when you work with really great people, this whole production has been really uh, just 
I'm, I'm so happy to just be included. The, the best advice I could give you, yeah. if I may give you some, just let your give and F break. Yeah. The minute it's broken, yeah. you can go out there and do anything. Right. You gotta really just let your give and F just break. Yeah. I tell that to all my students. That's cool. And then as soon as they just stop caring, and they're just going out there having nothing but pure fun, yeah. everything just takes over. Right. Like you just have so much fun doing what you're doing that you're not you you're you're not thinking about anything. That's actually everything too. just goes Whenever away. You 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 get embraced. You get into the flow. You, you call it when you get in the flow and you can just be natural about stuff you're not doubting stuff you're having fun they'll have fun because of it it's the whole thing yeah, yeah. i got you i i've got one more question and we can delete this out if you don't want to talk <laughs> no, about uh, this but when did you get to the macho man randy savage miss elizabeth tattoo <laughs> yeah, and, and what is everybody's reaction to that did, dave did you even know yeah he, i saw it dude i marked out for that yeah. when he's like look at this what, my my wife was kind of like, what are you doing? But I, I, one of the reasons I got it is my wife looks just like Miss Elizabeth. So I'm like, I'm convinced that as like a little kid, I have this ideal woman that I marry. So uh, yeah, I got it just uh, about a month ago, and it's just been great. And it's like, <laughs> well, you know, I got I got to work with him once. He was just such a cool guy and and such a fan of of his work in the ring and hearing stories about him how he. Put every move He's down. He's an Ohio with. guy, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, if anybody ever questions David Arquette's love for pro wrestling, a Macho Man Randy Savage tattoo. <laughs> I just told you, I'd fight him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would fight him. And and when you come back to Dayton, or when you come to Dayton, yeah, man. we could always go get matching tattoos, too. There we oh, go, bro. My we sick. gosh. Yeah. We sick. All I right. Uh, Dave, I'm do down. you have anything else? Um, Yes. Yes, okay. I do. Keep having fun, man. Keep keep loving what you're doing. Don't let anyone get in your head. Don't let anyone tell you that you're doing bad. Leave that to me. Thank yeah. you, man. I, I will give you honest you know, criticism because I'm probably the most honest person in wrestling, which is why most people hate me. But just keep doing what you're doing, man. You're, you. you're having so much fun. And just the energy that you have, and this isn't me trying to, you know, just suck up to you or anything. It's, it's okay this if it was. Hundred percent. Watching, watching you call your stuff, uh, and, and watching you just have fun and just interact with everyone in the back, and you just you look like you're a kid in a candy store. And, yeah, man. and that's the minute that, that you lose stream. that, yeah. you're done. The yeah. minute you lose that, you're done. Don't ever lose that. It's like you got that childhood innocent right now, and you're having so much fun. You can see you're having fun. Don't let anyone take that away from you because that's yours, man. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You're the best. All right, PD Williams, here we are. Border City Wrestling 25th anniversary show. And who better to finish the night of interviews with than the man, the myth, the legend? No? Uh, Wait. Do you see the smile on my I face? I do. This is almost like kind of. Uh, interviewing my own dad. This is my father of wrestling. And your dad wouldn't even come on the podcast. No, probably because he's dead. Let's not go there. Okay. But um, bad taste. Um, but yeah, this is my trainer, my my mentor, the guy I look up to as a father, even though he's only like a few years older than me. Scott Demore. Scott, daddy, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Wow. First and foremost, thank you for letting me be a part of the 25th anniversary Border City show. This has been amazing. And even though I'm like a fringe hanger on kind of guy, you've welcomed me in and you've made available talent. And I feel like I'm part of the family. So thank you. Well, hey, you know, the, the fact is PD vouched yeah. for you. So so anybody that's that's good in PD's books is good in our books. It's uh, it's kind of like a certain other organization there is. Somebody vouches for somebody else, then uh, then they're good. And Petey said, hey, it's a friend of mine. So yeah. So if you ever screw up, I'll put a bullet in Petey's skull. Sweet. Oh, man. So, Scott, all right, let's get on to this. Now you are a vice president of Impact Wrestling. Um, we're all back together. You know, we got Sanjay, you, yourself. What, what do you see for – we're on the upswing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, just a quick brief, like, what, what do you see for the future of Impact? You know, I think we just, I think we're on a good path. Uh, you know, if you look at where we were just uh, just a few months ago, really, at the beginning of the year, I think coming out of 2017, there were certain, there's a lot of uncertainty. And I think that through these, these nine, ten months, we've really at least shown people that, like we talked about in the beginning, myself and Don and Ed, 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, we talked about how we needed to go out there. We needed to tell people what we were going to do, and then we needed to deliver because this company has had great highs in its in its history, but has also had some some problematic times. And one of the things has been consistency. And there's been times where, with this company, with Impact, and you know before it really TNA. Um, where it, you know, it promised stuff and then it, maybe it didn't quite deliver. So it was important to us that we say what we're going to do uh, and then we go out there and do it. And we knew it wasn't gonna be like we deliver once, we deliver twice, and we're like, okay, great, like everything's okay. We have to week in and week out, we have to show people that we're gonna go out there, we're gonna consistently deliver. People invest time into a wrestling company, to a wrestling promotion when they follow it. They invest time when they watch the product on TV, when they watch it online, when they follow it on social media, and then hopefully, they invest money when they buy tickets, they buy merchandise, they, you know, they support the product that way. So I think people are starting to understand that if they, if they invest time in us, we're going to give them a hell of a show. If we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And uh, all that uncertainty of if the show is going to happen is gone. And now people know the show is going to happen. And then the second phase is they know the show isn't just going to happen, but they know the show or at least are starting to believe the show is going to deliver. And I think we've done that with the television show week in, week out. I'm not going to say we have a perfect show, mm -hmm. but every week our guys go out there and really just, just go out there and just lay it all on the line. The guys in front of the camera and the girls in front of the camera and then everybody backstage as well. And then certainly if you look at Redemption and if you look at Slammiversary, I think our pay-per-views have really went out there and delivered. And I think that as we are here on the eve of 2019, you know, we're out there, people are buying tickets to come see Impact events. They're watching the television show, they're following on social media, and they're, uh, you know, they're buying pay-per-views. So we've got a long, long uh, road that we have to travel to get, uh, to get back to where this company was. But I think a lot of the right moves have, have been made. There was so much influx of talent and, and people behind the scenes exiting and coming in in the first half of the year. Now I think we've really kind of built a good team. Now certainly there's always going to be, it's a cyclical thing and there's gonna be changes. But I think we really have a great base. And that was our goal for 2018 is I think as we sit here, not even at the end of the year, I think we're maybe a little bit ahead of schedule from where we wanted to be, which is a great thing. So now we get to focus on, now that it's stable, now we got to focus on building. You know, what's next? Because you guys were the innovators of having a TV show and allowing other talent to go work on other TV shows. And you've seen other companies kind of fall in the line with what you guys have been doing. Uh, you now are ahead of the curve. Sometimes in different areas, you are setting industry standards, which it's something you don't really hear from Impact, but now you guys are ahead of the curve and doing innovative things. Are you guys looking at what's next to change the industry yet again? I mean, I think we always have to be looking at what we can do differently and what we can do better, because if you don't evolve, then you die. And uh, I think that we're, we're sitting there, and like you talked about being collaborative with, with lots of groups, I mean, uh, whether it's whether it's AAA, whether it's Lucha Underground, whether it's House of Hardcore, whether it's Border City Wrestling or Destiny or Defy or any of the other groups out there. I think that in this day and age, in a social media and digital world, people no longer follow one product. There's certainly a lot of people that look, they watch WWE and that's what they watch. But then there's a lot of wrestling fans out there, you know, that watch WWE watch some Impact, watch some Ring of Honor, watch some New Japan, watch some Lucha Libre, you know, that certainly and we saw with the, the All In event, both as a live event and as a broadcast event, everybody coming together, it, it really is something exciting for wrestling fans because for so long, everybody played in their own sandbox. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that groups are out there and collaborating, like, like look, we had talent, <coughs> sorry guys, we had talent on the All In uh, broadcast and we thought it was great you know the Cody and the Bucks and everybody reached out and said hey we want to have Impact represented so I mean Moose was there Cage was there Tessa was there and then like when I reached out when we reached out to Ring of Honor to say hey we're doing our 25th anniversary we'd really love to have you know Chris Saban there he's such a big part of things I mean I'll be honest we, we kind of like I did it I'm the one who reached out and I kind of thought like hey we have to do it so it's one of those things you don't want to say what if fully expecting them to say no and Ring of Honor is like, you know what, absolutely, um, you know, we're happy to let Chris Saban appear. So, um, like, that's a great thing. For these fans here, to, to see a guy like Chris Saban and guys like Petey and everything else come back here and, 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 and so many years later, I think that's a, that's a cool aspect of wrestling in this day and age. 
And to me, it's just something special that, I mean, and we're, we're grateful to, to, to Ring of Honor for letting him come here. And just like, you know, to impact has worked, obviously. I wear two hats, a BCW hat and an impact hat. So, um, you know, I'm difficult with myself sometimes. I yell at myself a lot. But ultimately, me and me usually are going to work out something. So, Scott, Dennis asks me all the time. Uh, I already asked Saban this on my podcast. You brought up, like, you know, all in and with Ring of Honor and Impact and stuff like that. I always give my answer to Dennis what I think, but I'm not privy to all these other conversations or whatever. So, you know, where would you say the state of, and we know there's been a bad relationship in the past, where would you say the state of Impact and Ring of Honor's relationship is now? I mean, I would say that it's cordial. Um, I can say that Joe Coff and, and Greg and Hunter and everybody there, uh, there's been no time that we've reached out that they haven't been responsive. We've certainly uh, been responsive to anything for them. So, like, we're not working together. Um, you know, like, like I said, they, they were a big part of the broadcast with All In, and it was on Honor Club. And uh, we certainly wanted to be a part of that, and we're happy to be a part of that. And I think it was great that, you know, like them sending us here. So I would say, look, we're not partners. We're not working together, but we're not enemies, which I think is a big step because, yep. like you said, there was so much bad blood. And it was justified. I mean, you were here for some of the things. Yeah. Over the years, TNA did some really not nice things to, to Ring of Honor. So when you're in Ring of Honor's position now and doing tremendous business, then why would you ever want to, to in any way, shape, or form, acknowledge or, or even talk to, you know, Impact Wrestling? But uh, I think it's great from, uh, from when we first talked about, um, you know, the, the new structure we're going to have here with myself, Don, and Ed, and Sanjay, and Jimmy, and yourself, and everything. Um, we, we've always been, you know, uh, in communication with Ring of Honor because there's no reason where just because you're competitors doesn't mean you're, you, you wish ill on each other. So there's no reason why to, to ever have, you know, bad communication. Good communication is important, even among competitors. And I think we're at a, a nice, stable place. You look at it, you look at the all-in broadcast, you look at Chris Saban being here, and you look as we get ready for the, the Jericho Cruise. Like, like we're, doing, we're doing Ring of Honor versus Impact, yeah. which yeah. is super cool. And it's, it's a nice way for us to do it. You know, it's not being broadcast. It's just for the people on the ship. Like, it's a cool event for Chris, for Chris Jericho and his crews. And it's, and our talent's really excited. And the Ring of Honor talent is really excited because there's so many fresh matchups there. So where will it go? I don't know. But I, I think it's great that we're at a point where I know if we reach out to Joe Coff or Greg or Hunter or anybody else, they're going to be responsive. They, they, may, they may not want to do something that we talk about, but there's, there, there's a communication, which I think is a great start uh, for any, any relationship. And reestablishing some respect between all the parties, I think, is a huge, huge step. Pete, I got two more questions. Let me okay. ask my first one, and then you can ask one, and we'll you, wrap you, it up. You with go one. ahead. All right. Uh, and you may not want to answer this, and we can delete this off because we you know, recorded. But, you know, the biggest question PD and I get is, what was the meeting about between Impact and WWE that was reported a few weeks ago? And I feel like it'd be a disservice if I didn't at least ask. I, like, I, I understand you can't tell us everything, but could you maybe fill in people? Because this has been one of the best-kept secrets in wrestling right now. I mean, I don't, I don't think it was that good a, a secret when it's been reported all over the internet um i look at the wrong places <laughs> <laughs> you mean Pornhub didn't pick it up <laughs> um you know it, it kind of take everything i said about uh about ring of honor mm -hmm. and and change ring of honor to wwe since uh since the beginning of the year we've done we've done three content deals with wwe we uh we did the the hardy's documentary deal to to supply footage for them for the hardy's documentary uh, we did a deal to provide footage of AJ Styles and, and, and Kurt Angle for, for Table for Three, and we provided some footage for uh, Bruce Pritchard's uh, podcast on, on the network. So we, we've, done, we've done a few deals together, uh, and I, I, I think that WWE is seeing, like, look, like this is, this is a different day in, with Impact Wrestling, and I think maybe on just the, the most minute of levels, maybe they're seeing it's, it's a different day and age in wrestling. Um, so, I mean, there wasn't like, it's one of those things, like it's, there was a meeting, we got together, mm -hmm. we talked and it was kind of like, hey, it's kind of nice to be face to face and, and say hello and just say that, you know, it's 2018, it's a whole different world and there's no reason why people shouldn't communicate. So there's really no agenda to it. It was nice and, um, you know, we move on, but it's, it's how the business is now, which I think is tremendous. The fact that, you know we can do a deal with WWE that helps that helps them, you know, tell a great story on the network, whether it's one of the shows or whether it's the Hardy documentary. It's certainly good for us. 
to uh, not just make a little bit of scratch for <laughs> providing the footage, but also to me, more so than that, is the promotion they give us for the GWN and, and that, um, you know, have it, having it on their network and on their platform and saying, hey, if you want to see more of this, you know, download and watch the GWN up that, that's great for us. And that's something that wouldn't happen even two years ago. No. So whether it's WWE, whether it's Ring of Honor, no matter who it is, I just think that it's great in this day and age, finally we've stopped with that old school wrestling BS of, well, if you're with him, you know, you can't do nothing with us. Yeah. So to get past that and do it, like, that's how business works. Like I, in my, in my other life, you know, here in Windsor as a property developer and that, um, I have people that I'm, I have competing developments against. But that doesn't mean we don't talk. We talk about things, we compare notes, and it's just, it's just it, everybody benefits if there's communication and, and a little bit of respect. And I think it's great that everybody in the wrestling business is uh, in seeing that. And I think we're, we're very proud of the part we've played in help trying to push that agenda. So uh, it, it's pretty cool, and it's pretty cool to be here for, for 25 years of uh, BCW. And um, it's pretty cool to be here with, uh, with Petey, who uh, I remember him coming to the school as I monopolized a little time here. And being like, God, this guy is so small. Yeah, so small. small. And, uh, you know, I remember thinking, like, as I talked to him and he wanted to join, and he just kind of said, like, look, I'm going to law and security, um, you know, at, uh, at the college, St. Clair College. Yep. And uh, I just, you know, I just like to have some matches, you know, do this so I can say I did it and hopefully get on a show at the Chicharo Club, which is where we ran our big shows at the time. And uh, he was a waiter at the time. He was a terrible waiter. Uh, I knew he was and, a waiter. <laughs> uh, and thank God he made it in wrestling. And, uh, you know, now it's, there's times in my brain, and I don't know if you've seen this in your life, where I'm like, I have to stop myself sometimes with, with like, with like Petey and with Sanjay and with Saban and with, with Alex Shelley and so many guys. And it's like in my brain, I have to, I have to remember, like these are, these are full grown adult men <laughs> with families. And like, I mean, like I'm proud of each and every one of them. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have been part of their journeys, but it's like, I gotta stop myself. Cause in my brain, it'll be like, hey, how old was Petey Williams? I'm like, well, I mean, he wasn't, he was 20 and that was a long time ago. So he's probably like 26 and then, you know, he's not 26. So uh, I don't realize the passage of time, but I just wanted to take this for him. I've said it to him privately. I just want to say I'm, I'm proud of him. And when we started doing stuff with Impact, one of the first things, I, we weren't even running it. We we're just trying to help out. And it was like me and Sanjay said, let's get Petey back in the mix because he's, he's a great wrestler. He's a great mind. He's just a guy that brings positive energy, as you've seen, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we're excited to have him back. So All right, that's I, my put over for Petey. Awesome. I got to cut in front of you now because okay. he set up my question perfectly. Okay. On the way here, I asked Petey a question, and I asked him an honest answer about it. And since you're here, I want to ask you, do you honestly believe – is Petey Williams a Impact Hall of Famer? I, I mean, and Petey doesn't Do you want to know so. my answer first? Or do you want to... It, but this is a sincere okay. question yep. because the Hall of Fame's coming up and mm -hmm. Petey's pushing 40, you know, nobody... What, what the father time is undefeated when it comes to wrestling. Yeah. He's kind of getting up there. And is he a Hall of Famer? Uh, I'm going to say... Petey's going to say no. Right. I'm going to say when you go through history, like certainly there's some guys who there'll be some big political hurdles mm -hmm. to get over with. You know, obviously AJ is the, the guy of guys that, uh, that should be in there. Um, obviously Samoa Joe uh, is somebody that, I mean, when you look at a body of work, certainly needs to be considered. Um, Christopher Daniels uh, is somebody that certainly needs to be considered. But you, if you look at it, I think that if... PD, PD, I think needs to go in for one of for a couple of reasons. One, he was such a stabilizing force in an X division that had so many guys who were flip flop and fly. And I mean that as a, I don't mean that as a knock. I mean that as a compliment. Right. We had so many amazing athletes. PD could work with anybody. We had a lot of guys that couldn't work with each other because you know, and it comes from lucha libre. You need a flyer and you need a base. And you know, Christopher Daniels could do both. So few could. Petey can can do some flying, like he's 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 his era's Lance Storm. Like you watch a match with Petey Williams and some, and you're like, oh my god, they did so much amazing stuff. And unless you really dissect it as a wrestler, you don't realize it. But but Petey, just like Lance, is never the guy that did the stuff. He's yeah. all the guy that that made it look great. So I think that role was very important, uh, and I think that's why he's worthy of consideration. And the second one is, um, and I don't say this because of me. Um, and it sounds very self-serving, but at a time when there was a, a really struggling to be heels in TNA wrestling, 
Team Canada was just a no-brainer. Um, and it wasn't my idea. I got forced into doing it. But there was something really special. And the, the, the idea, I think Bobby Roode is a Hall of Famer. I think Eric Young may be a Hall of Famer. I think Petey certainly needs to be considered as a Hall of Famer. But much like they did with the Four Horsemen, and they can do it without me in the group. Mm -hmm. But there is no way that that group of, of people don't belong in there, maybe individually, and, and also for consideration as a group. Because the X Division struggled for heels, and Team Canada were heels. And the whole company struggled to have people to get booed, and damn it, did we get booed. Whether it was against America's Most Wanted, whether it was against, you know, uh, you know Hoyt and, and, you know, whoever it was. Two, two groups that always got heat was Team Canada and Kid Cash. And, and I love Kid Cash, actually, but, I mean, I think we were a lot easier to work with. Yeah. <laughs> Send it home, man. Scott, um, well, thank you so much for... for I mean, you answered a lot of our questions that Dennis asks, Dennis asks me all the time, and I just, I'm like, I'm not the guy. I, I can give you my thoughts and opinions and on it. So this is good that we were able to talk about this, and thank you so much for See you being next on week. the show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> but where can people find you on uh, uh, social media and stuff like that? You know what? Uh, on Twitter, at Scott Demore. Um, I, I, I'm not the most active Twitter tweeter because I'm not good at it. Um, you know, I, I like a lot of stuff in that. I don't, uh, I kind of keep stuff to myself because I, I think that. Uh, I think people want to hear from the athletes mm -hmm. uh, in our industry. So, but I, I, I'm always on there. I'm always, I always, I read everything that comes through. Even some of the people that send the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Um, Sorry about that, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, check me out on there, and you can, you can. What's your handle on there? At Scott Demore. Okay. At Scott Demore. So, and uh, and that's about it. So, or just 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 inundate uh, PD with messages, and he'll get them to me. Awesome. He will.